Hey there, Postal here. So today we're looking at the Hawker Seahawk. Uh, this was, is a in-game a tier nine uh, British multi-role plane. And um, well, what can you expect when you've gotten up to this point on the line? Well, um, what I like about this particular line is it's pretty consistent all the way down. You do lose a little bit of maneuverability at tier nine, um, but you certainly gain a lot of airspeed and um, but you, you're going to be used to the guns that you have on this particular aircraft uh, you do have a lot more rockets uh, but they're pretty low damage output rockets um, like the rest of this line it's more about its dogfighting abilities and its guns than it is about its ground attack abilities uh, so some some history of this particular plane to start off with. Uh, as the name implies, this is a Navy, or built for the Navy um, aircraft, uh, the Royal Navy. And um, so you'll notice it has the tricycle undercarriage, meaning it um, you know, is built for landing on an aircraft carrier, the one um, wheel up front rather than a wheel in the back. Uh, obviously, we've got the, the hook on the back here. Not that that'll ever be used in game, uh, at least not in its current iteration, but um, you know, you've got these four Hispanos, 20 mils, that you should be used to on this particular line. Uh, the difference is it's mounted onto the fuselage, uh, which to me um, is a significant improvement. You're really able to uh, focus your fire with those um, being mounted on the fuselage there. The rockets, because they're relatively low output as far as damage is concerned, yeah, there's 20 of them, but they're only doing 900 damage. Um, at tier 9, that's not significant um, and and so very much like this line's been from the hurricane one at tier four all the way to this point the rockets um, and ground attack armament is supplementary you really want to be able to utilize your cannons to take down uh, whatever's in the air and if you need some extra ground attack to help flip a sector you've got it available but this is not going to win you a mining facility on your own kind of situation right um, hopefully that makes sense. As if you've gotten this far in the um, in the British line, I'm sure you've recognized that as well. So I want to give a little bit of history of this particular plane, and um, then we'll hop into some uh, some gameplay. Hopefully, show you why uh, why I really really enjoy this particular line and this plane specifically. Um, so the Seahawk was built as the first. Um, first jet-powered aircraft for the Royal Navy uh, took some design um, design cues from planes that Hawker had previously built, like the Typhoon and, and Tempest. Um, and that's one thing I, I like about this particular line is Wargaming did do a relatively good job of you know, progressing down the line and um, kind of how they did in actual history. So. This was built based um, based on uh, originally it was going to be built for um, as a land-based aircraft, um, but the uh, government didn't really seem the British government didn't really see a need for that considering the attacker was available or going to be available at that particular time. Kind of seemed redundant. Um, the first um, iteration of this, uh, the F1, was just armed with the four 20 mil Hispanos um, and had the 101 engine on it. There was eventually available an F2 which has some slight improvements and um, this is really uh, the F3 version or FB3 version of this particular plane meaning it was able to mount um, various things. It, it was able to mount bombs, rockets, um, cameras, things of that nature. Um, so this is the multi-role version of what was originally built to be a fighter of sorts. Um, so Hawker realized they, that there wasn't a place yet for a jet aircraft in the Royal Navy and decided to gear it towards being a, um, a aircraft that could be used on um, aircraft carriers. So that's why this particular design is set up the way it is and where its place is in history. Uh, and it actually eventually did lead to the combination of this and some design, some American designs such as the Sabre led to um, the Hunter 
uh, with the swept wing design, but we'll go over that once we get the tier 10 version of this particular plane. So uh, now that we've got a brief, brief history, uh, of course not all the detailed history, let's hop into a battle and see why, um, why I believe this particular plane is, is so good at tier 9. Controlled by the enemy. Okay, tier 10 battle. Javelin on our team. Oh, Saber on the enemy team. Two tier 10s on the enemy team. Hmm. Hmm. No such is life of a tier 9 plane. So, let's go ahead and get the... Hmm. See, I think I'm probably going to pick up the uh, garrison and let the tier 10s start smacking each other around before I get in involved Pilots, with them. Get ready for action. Let's go. Doing a little bit more research while I was waiting for the game to load. This particular variant, uh, I said it was a FB3. Um, so it was, seems like I was wrong there. It could be either an F5 or an F6. Uh, based on the 103 engine that is mounted on this particular plane. Um, and the F6 is specifically more of a ground attack uh, style plane. So, yeah. Anywho, on that note, let's go ahead and let's put this garrison. And the reason I'm doing this is to allow the, um, the other planes to start losing some and shedding some hit points. And that way when I get there, uh, it can be a little bit more effective. These guns are great. Really, truly are. Um, but any kind of help I can get myself, uh, the happier I'll be for sure. Definitely going outside my comfort zone, or this plane's comfort zone, as far as altitude performance is concerned. Um, but to me, it's you know you make a, a educated guess. I knew that there was no enemy, like actual enemy aircraft, and at that point there wasn't very many um, defense aircraft in the air, and so I was okay with going that high up. I got the feeling that that is our. Well, doesn't matter. It's one of those pain in the butt ground attack planes. So let's go ahead and get over here and see what we can do with it. And you know, IL 40, it's not like it's going to be an easy plane to take down. These guns definitely are good at tearing up um, heavy aircraft, including ground attack planes. The issue with ground attack planes, of course, especially things like an IL 40, is just the amount of. Uh, defensive uh, air defense this has on itself. Uh, so, but you can see we pretty well tore that plane up, right? And that's a freaking IL-40. That's not a... Well, I was hoping there was something uh, easy to kill here, but it doesn't really look like it, does it? Um, that's not a an easy plane. Even at the this, um, with this kind of plane, so... Let's see if we can try to get this particular sector flipped. And so this is what I was talking about. These, um, oh, hello. These rockets aren't going to like win any sectors, but they're going to help flip sectors in this kind of situation. If I had to take over all the ground um, facilities there, I would have been in trouble. the opportunity uh, to show off the guns other than being able to tear up that IL-40, this IL-40. Um, it certainly has the ability to do that. Ooh, we need to get this guy. Our military base is launching strikes on the enemy. This will make things easier for you. See if we can uh, defend the center here a little bit. Some big J7. So many J7s. I've seen a bunch of them out there recently. Oh, we got that F86 saber. I know he can outmaneuver me, but I'm hoping that I can. I have some decent uh, guns sitting here, but I can't. So he's probably going to be turning around pretty soon. Well, that stinks. Uh, 
Dang it, dang. Man, trouble. So much trouble. I'm in trouble and I don't know what to do. Unfortunately, J7 hit me so hard. Wasn't able to really recover about that. What are we talking about? I don't know what my uh, my colleague in arms over there is talking about. Thank you for. Whether he was thanking me for taking out the um, F86 or not. Let's go ahead and go over and see if we can do anything about this um, comm center. We've got our military base doing nothing against the garrison. I assume a lot against the garrison, but it's a garrison like rather have it get to the um, center, but hey, who am I? Another J7, we got J7s everywhere. I uh, would have liked to be able to get him. I'm just going to put out all my rockets because I don't got time to like strategically Hey, look at that. Place them. When you've got a couple J7s uh, in your neighborhood, you just want to um, get to them and get them knocked out if possible. Oh, no. Hoping he gets bored with me because he's a bot. Yeah? No? Apparently not. So let's go get this guy really quick. Receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. Support will be unable to reach you. Do you read me? Over. He did get bored with me, apparently. So he may have uh, the maneuverability bit. Oh, this ground pounder thinks I'm not paying no attention to him. Little does he know. He probably knows a lot, I'm assuming. And let's not get a bomb you blown up in our face. You any longer. The storm is too heavy. Do you copy? Over. Alright, alright. Nope. Somebody coming down to punch me in the face. Uh, javelin's going away, quick. Did I turn it? But oh, wait, is a javelin. He could be going anywhere, huh? From the military base. Take action. Let's head on back to the center then. Javelin's doing what a javelin does. I don't have time for that, so let's go ahead and get this IL-40 again, because that's what we do. You can just see the power of these particular guns. I'm really not doing all that well this particular match, but you can tell that the potential of these particular guns, if you ever get into the, um, get the opportunity to use them, much higher than I really want to be. Keep it up. Victory is almost ours. But if he's gonna give me the opportunity, I need to take advantage of that, right? So we did. Let's dive back down. Try to get closer to my optimum altitude, which is just lower. F86F, these. F these F84F, I'm sorry. I was gonna say I knew it was multi roll. They can definitely outmaneuver me. I think even the. Um, this 84B tier 9 can probably out here for me. But at least when I get them down to my range, I'm able to stick with them. Hello, guns. Seriously, like how many um how many of those do I need to get? With 94 I can definitely outmaneuver. Fighter coming in, oh, FJ1 could tear me up if it wanted to. 
credits. Do I give it the opportunity? The no. Get the guns going. Uh, don't get rammed by my own plane. I'm Good proud game. Of you pilots. Head back home. Did most of my damage there after the um, the squall line, but I'll take it. Let's head on back. Okay, so we had ourselves a relatively lackluster game, and yet was still able to, to pull out 13,000 personal points, 15 frags. Ooh, fuel missions, fuel systems completed. Um, mission one anyway. And was able to get second place on the team. Uh, but you were able to see how well these guns, when you put them to use, can really tear up anything that allows it to get torn up. Um, yeah, I can't outmaneuver a lot of the planes. I mean, let me let me go right back here and see. Go down the list of the planes I can't outmaneuver here. The J7s, all three of those I can't. FJ, F84, the F86. Uh, so a little bit less than half of their overall team, and yet, you know, your interactions are not all about you doing a straight up dogfight. Um, your guns hit harder than a lot of these other planes you're going to run into, so if they're coming straight at you, you know, you've got the opportunity to try to take them out before um, they get to you. If they're focused on another plane, like you saw me do with the F-86, um, the FJ-1, a couple times with the J-7s, um, F-84 I think as well, it doesn't matter. If they're focused on something else, that's when you want to be attacking them. Your guns hit so hard that by the time they realize they're being hit, it's it's either they need to get out of the way or they're dead. And a lot of players, you know, they're like, oh, you know, just a half more second or one more second and I'll kill this plane I'm shooting at. And that's all the Seahawk needs is that half second. Um, and it's all because these are positioned on the fuselage. You've got so much firepower at such a precise um accuracy to just really tear those planes up. And that's why I put the accuracy, you know, marksman, marksman one, marksman two. I want to make sure as many of my shots are hitting as possible. Um, and yeah, so this was actually, again, a relatively mediocre showing for this particular plane. Um, even though it was 15 frags, it didn't really start kicking in until after the squall line, as far as any kind of excitement was concerned. Uh, but this is really a steady eddy. Um, just like the pr the other planes leading up to it. So I'm thoroughly um, enjoying this particular plane. I'm really looking forward to the Hunter, but I'm definitely not getting rid of this at Tier 9. It is a keeper in my opinion, um, and an absolute blast to play. So I hope this particular video was uh, enjoyable to you. You know, If it was, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If it wasn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, definitely feel free to comment. I always respond to any comments. Um, and I'm always looking to get better, so if you've got any suggestions, you know, feel free to. I've also got my email address in the description. And um, yeah, so I'm still uh, enjoying the Martian Nations here for the British, and I'll continue to try to get myself a hunter by the time the discounts are over. Hope you have a great night. Thank you.